and I understand now we are um, capable technologically of uh, taking the testimony from Mr. Kernaz. Uh, Mr. Kernaz, if you hear me, and I hope you do, uh, would you please uh, proceed and give us your statement? Mr. Chairman, my name is Murat Kurnas. I am a 26-year-old Turkish citizen who was born and raised in Bremen, Germany. I currently live here in Bremen with my mother, father, and two younger brothers. I would like to thank you for inviting me to address this committee and uh, the American people about the injustice of the prison camp in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Although I have uh, committed no crime and have never harmed anyone or associated with terrorists, I spent five years of my life in American detention in Kandahar, Afghanistan, and then Guantanamo under terrible conditions that no one should suffer. I have much to say to the committee about my experience, but I will try to keep my comments short because of the limited time. I understand that my American lawyer, Bahir Azmi, has submitted documents to you demonstrating my, innoc my innocence and the unfair legal process in Guantanamo, which I, which I hope you will also read. Let me interrupt for one okay. moment. Mr. Kanaz, and we, he has submitted those documents, and we will make them a part of uh, the committee's record. Um, you can be assured that we will review those, and now p please proceed. And if you could speak just a little more slowly and into the microphone, it would be of great assistance. My parents are work immigrants from Turkey. They came to Germany over 30 years ago. They are Muslims, but like many Turkish people in Germany, they are not very religious. In 2000, when I was about 18 years old, I became more and more interested in Islam, but not in any political sense. In summer of 2001, I married a woman who lived in Turkey. My family made arrangements for, for her to come to live with us in Germany. In starting in December 2001. In the meantime, I wanted to prepare myself to live, to live a correct life with her under Islam. I wanted to learn to read the Quran in Arabic and to pray, which are very important to faithful Muslims. I decided this period of time would be the last chance to travel and study Islam before living with my life in, together in Bremen, Germany. I made contact in Bremen with a Muslim missionary group called Jamaat al tabliq My impression was that this was a peaceful and not political group which spreads the message of Islam in a peaceful way. They do, they do charity work, teach people important values about family and prayer, and completely reject terrorism. My American lawyer has submitted materials to the committee about this group, which demonstrates that it has nothing to do with terrorism. They suggested that I go to Pakistan. It is cheap, and they have many of their schools and their teachers, and their teachers there. I decided to go with a friend from Bremen who also wanted to learn to read the Quran. His name is Sajuk Bilgin. When the terrorists attacked New York City on 9-11, I was horrified by their actions. I believe those who helped commit those acts should all be punished harshly. I condemn all of terrorism, and the Quran instructs me that it is never permissible to kill yourself or to kill women and children. I believe strongly that Osama bin Laden is preventing Islam by killing people in the name of Islam. I blame Osama bin Laden for having lost five years of my life. I already made similar statements to my Combatant Status Review Tribunal, CSRT, in 2004. The CSRT still falsely 
labeled me an enemy combatant. Despite the terrorist attack of 9-11, I was, I was not worried about traveling to Pakistan in October 2001. Pakistan is not Afghanistan. The war had not yet started, and I had no idea a possible war could spread over the border to Pakistan. In Pakistan, I traveled with some of the Tablikis and visited several cities as a religious tourist. I never went to Afghanistan, and I never met with anyone from Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. I also never came in touch with any weapons, and I never committed any crime. I had a return ticket to Germany to rejoin my family and live there. On my way back to Germany, I was arrested by a Pakistani police. I was traveling on a bus with many other civilian passengers. The police stopped the bus and removed me. They had no suspicion other than the fact that I was a foreigner with a Turkish passport and German residency. After a few days, I was handed over to the border to U.S. forces. I was soon transferred to a U.S. military base in Kandahar, Afghanistan, and then later to Guantanamo. I was later told by a U.S. interrogator that the U.S. paid $3,000 bounty for me. In the American prison camp in Kandahar, I was shocked by the awful treatment prisoners received. I had a very high impression of Americans all my life, so I couldn't believe Americans would do these kinds of things. It was wintertime and freezing cold and I had just shorts and no blankets. I was beaten repeatedly. During interrogations, my head was blanketed under water to simulate drowning, and electroshocks were sent through my feet. At one point, I was chained and hung by hands for a long time. During the time I hung in, in the air, a doctor sometimes checked uh, if, if I was okay, then I walked behind up again. <clears throat> the guards accused me of being affiliated with Muhammad Atta. They thought that because we are both from Germany and Muslims, we must have worked with him. This was ridiculous and without any basis in reality. But the hanging was punishment for not admitting this and caution to try to force me to admit it. The pain from this treatment was beyond belief. I know that others died from this kind of treatment. From Kandahar, I was transferred to Guantanamo. In Guantanamo, the conditions and the treatment were barely fit for animals, and occasionally not for human beings. I was deprived of sleep and food for a long time, for long, inter for long intervals. I was forced to be in solitary confinement for long periods of time for no reason and su subjected to extreme cold and heat. I was subjected to religious and sexual humiliation. I was beaten multiple times. The guards forced me to accept medication that I did not want. I was interrogated over and over again but always with the same questions. I told my story over and over, my name over and over, and details about my family over and over. I quickly got the impression that the interrogations were useless and pointless and not interested in the truth. Twice, <clears throat> twice I was visited by a German interrogator. The first time I saw my American lawyer was in October 2004. At first, I did not believe he was a lawyer. There was no law in Guantanamo, and interrogators always lied to us. But he brought a handwritten note from my mother, and so I came to trust him. He told me there was a legal case that my family brought 
to get me released. I had no idea about this. From 2002 until my lawyer enlisted in 2004 in Guantanamo, I had no idea anyone even know Guantanamo exists or that I was alive.